mask off and microphone on. A uh, very warm welcome to everyone. I know there's one or two people who this is their first venture back into St Mary's after the lockdown. So a warm welcome to you all. For any who haven't yet realised, Joy is now left us as curate and we have to wait until first week in October. Do leave her alone. Right? No visits to the vicarage. All right? And if you see her, just wave unless she stops and initiates conversation with you. Pretend she's not here. Uh, so we welcomed Canon Tudor, um, who's our priest just for us for the next two months. We're very, very pleased to have you with us. So if you have any pastoral concerns, contact details are in the bumper newsletter. You should have the bumper newsletter. If you haven't had the bumper newsletter, please let us know and we'll make a note and get one to you, but that lasts right through to September. Uh, one piece of sad news that Doreen Dolder, if you haven't heard, died last weekend. Um, as things happen, uh, there will be funeral details available somehow, but obviously people won't be able to attend the funeral still. Uh, that's all, so I will leave everything to you, Tudor. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Remove my mask when I'm, I'm speaking, um, and I will put it back uh, when we come to the distribution of communion. Welcome. It's good to be with you. Um, I, I don't think that my brief is so to minister here that you will welcome Joy's return with open arms. Rather, I, I hope that we will enjoy our time together. It, it, it's the oddest period, isn't it? Um, affecting all of our usual activities. Um, at this point, can I say, I am open to any invitations to come and meet people um, suitably socially distanced. Um, but if, if you would like to invite me to call, then I will be very glad to do so in an appropriate way. Um, when it comes to communion, we will follow the same pattern. I think we're getting used to it, those who were here uh, last couple of weeks, um, and uh, just follow the instructions of the wardens, uh, and you will arrive here safely for that. As we gather this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Together, almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secret hide, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the New Testament book of Hebrews, we read these words. We run the race set before us, surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses. Therefore, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely. Bring them to Jesus in penitence and faith. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Christ, have mercy. O 
keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have put my trust in you. <coughs> Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll stand and say together, if we are able to stand, please do. To say together, glory to God and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, we remain standing as we bring collect our prayers together let our your merciful ears O lord be open to the prayers of your humble servants and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit for our reading. Uh, first reading is from Genesis chapter 45. Verses 1 to 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither ploughing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honoured in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him.
Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down the beard on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Uh, reading from Romans chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you. Matthew chapter 15. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And the disciples came and urged him, saying, send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Lord, pray now that as we consider your word, you would speak to us, to our hearts, to our minds, to our spirits. For Jesus' sake, amen. Do have a seat. Um, but I love the way that uh, this reading always and only seems to come along in August, in the middle of the holiday season, um, because it tells us about Jesus, if not exactly being on holiday, then certainly he's being off his patch and looking for some peace and quiet and some recuperation, which uh, actually sounds to me rather like a holiday. Maybe uh, the compilers of our lectionary, the uh, schedule of readings, maybe they do have a sense of humour after all. Uh, but Jesus was not amused when his holiday plans were interrupted by a woman accosting him and demanding that he heal her daughter. Jesus was not encouraging. He was not very welcoming. He was not very inclusive. It can be very instructive for us, actually, that Jesus often confounded the expectations of his disciples 
And if ever we think we've got him worked out, um, we find he does the same for us. He keeps breaking those, those boundaries. At first, Jesus was silent. The disciples were not silent. They wanted Jesus to send her away. It was their holiday too. But Jesus didn't listen to them either. Let's, let's just step back a moment from this. Um, Jesus was a healer. And there were people all over Israel, all over the Middle East, all over the world who needed healing. Jesus was a teacher. He could have taught anywhere. But by and large, he stayed within Israel. He stayed working with the Jewish people. He stayed focused. He didn't do everything that he could have done. He certainly didn't do everything that other people wanted him to do. He, he wasn't governed by the immediate and urgent demands on him. He refused to be at the beck and call of everyone else. He knew that his first calling was to the people of Israel and not generally to everyone in the world. How did he know that? Well, surely the answer is that he walked close to God, to God his Father. He knew his focus because he knew his God. But the passage also teaches us that Jesus was not totally inflexible. It seems he enjoyed the, the witty response of the Canaanite woman. Even the, the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. I mean, the woman was not making demands on him. She was quite prepared to acknowledge her humble standing before Jesus, but surely, she said, surely there's just a crumb for my request. She can ask, and Jesus responded and granted her daughter deliverance. It's all by his grace. It's no, nothing of it is our right or our deserving. And at other times, Jesus actually healed other Gentiles, other non-Jews. And towards the end of his ministry, he did welcome some Greek visitors. And so there are hints and allegations all the way through this Matthew, which is the most Jewish of the Gospels, that God's grace, God's healing, God's salvation is for the whole world, not just for God's historic people, the Jews. And yet at the same time, we have to recognize, we mustn't forget, that the universal good news of Jesus is focused and rooted in the very Jewish story and the primary focus of Jesus' work. There's a danger uh, of digressing here, but historically, anti-Semitism has arisen where people have forgotten the Jewish focus of Jesus and his ministry. But let's just put that aside for one moment and think about Jesus being focused and the implications that there are for ourselves, both individually and as a church together. Now this is an observation you will be pleased to know entirely from elsewhere, uh, but I have found that many Christians are pretty chaotic spiritually. Even when they are the most together people when it comes 
to, uh, to work or at home. Regular Bible reading and prayer, the spiritual disciplines of worship and witness. How focused, how focused are we as to where God wants us to use our energies, our gifts and our, our talents? And now as a, a church, looking forward to working with a new incumbent. Uh, do we have a clear and agreed vision of where we are going and why we are going in that particular direction? We know, don't we, that drifting is not good for us. It's good to know our focus. But having said that, Neither is it good for us to be so focused and so driven that we miss the opportunities to learn and to grow and develop in new and unexpected directions. We can welcome the unexpected stranger. Take time to talk with someone we meet casually, socially distanced, of course, we can pray for something that just strikes us. We can give to an appeal that just lands on the doormat or in, the, in our inbox. And I wonder that it could be that what we need to take from our passage depends on the sort of person we are. If we, are, uh, if we tend to drift, then we can learn about being more focused on Jesus and maybe what he wants us to be and to do. And if we are such focused people, even to the point of being driven, then maybe we can learn to be more open to God's little interruptions during the week. Just pause for a moment. And I invite you to, to stand, if you are able, to join in saying the affirmation of faith in our order of service. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is made. We believe in God the Son, who is in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. And as we have been, so we will allow some space for our own personal prayer. We come confidently to our Lord, praying to Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray for the world that you love, for our nations and governments. Especially we remember before you Beirut, people of Belarusia, parts of the world ravaged by COVID, and lacking the resources even to know who is affected and how many. We pray for the people of India, South Asia, the southern parts of Africa and South America.
Lord, hear us. Pray for your church called to worship and witness. Especially we pray for our leadership, the Bishop Rachel, Robert. Pray for joy in this time of interval. Pray for one another as the church in this benefice as we serve day by day in little ways, interacting with our neighbours. Lord, hear us. We pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying, and those we love in time, in, in love in need at this time. Especially we remember those bereaved in our benefits, praying for those who mourn the loss of Claire Fardell, Alan Knapp, Eileen Driver, Ray Boys and Doreen Dolder. Lord, hear us. Pray for ourselves. And thanks for your provision. And in hope as you meet our daily need. Lord, hear us. For all whom we remember before you, Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity. Merciful Father, one of the joys of meeting together is that we come and clearly come as a, a body, as a group of people together uh, for communion. And one of the frustrations of this time is that we are not able to recognize that more closely uh, in the peace. But can I invite you now to, to stand, if you are able, for the peace. And after I've said the words, let's acknowledge one another. Some people like put their hands on their heart. Some use the Indian Namaste, or the, the, there's the Zoom wave option. So, so you choose how you want to acknowledge one another. But where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there I am in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We are, if we turn back now to the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy 
at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels archangels and with all the company of heaven we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying holy Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and honour. Sit or kneel to pray, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father. Give us today our Give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear our sins. Have mercy on us. 
Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us the peace. Come, let us draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for us, the feet and his blood, which he shed for us, to eat and drink in remembrance that he died for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the grace of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Together, almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. For the final prayer, prayer of blessing, can I once more say thank you for coming and it's been lovely to, to worship with you. Um, today. Uh, I think we are we're going to have all being well um, a, a Zoom a coffee um, and the details are on the new sheet if you'd like to join us go home, tune in and hopefully uh, those of us who are able to can, can meet together for a, a, a virtual coffee together but otherwise the Lord be with you through this coming week. And to may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Go in the peace of Christ. Thank you.